Well, they have about 50% market share as far as the aviation space in India is concerned. They've had quite the quarter. But the larger question is, can that in fact be sustained? We're in conversation with Peter Elbers, the CEO at Indigo. Peter, always a pleasure speaking to you. Likewise. Thank you so much for taking our time and joining us here. Uh, I want to begin with something fun first. You've yes. uh, captured social media with your pictures of Holi in Mathura, then donning a Vishti in Chennai. How are you enjoying your time in India? I actually, I love it. Um, you know, <clears throat> living here, working here, one, one should get yourself familiarized in the, in, the, in the best and the, the quickest possible way, and I love it. I must admit, Mathura, <laughs> that holy was, was an experience I've never had something in my life. But I, I felt perfectly comfortable. I spent the entire day there, and, and people were cheering, and it was a bit busy, I must admit. <laughs> <laughs> Even for Indian standards, it was very busy. But uh, no, I, I appreciate it a lot. And Chennai, obviously, I was meeting our team. We yeah. have a big operation in Chennai, and uh, I like to, to visit all our teams across across the country and, and see them, listen to them, speak with them, uh, listen what's on their mind, how I can help them to do a better job tomorrow. So that, that was actually great. That's good. Um, I, as I said, when I introduced you, you've had quite the quarter. Uh, the numbers uh, speak for themselves. Yeah. But the larger question still is with the kind of market share and Q3 results showing optimism, is that sustainable? Well, if, if you take a step back and see what's happening in India and see the recovery post COVID, um, and uh, we see a, really a V-shaped type of recovery, and that, that third quarter earnings for us from October till December mm. were actually, I would say, a very good reflection of that, that strong market development. And the Indian market is really on, on, on I would say, new momentum. And yeah. Probably it was a bit boiling prior to COVID. COVID, of course, stopped everything. But I, I would say now post-COVID, it's like hand in hand with the growth of the of the Indian economy mm. as, as a whole, it's really moving forward. Peter, uh, you know, Air India has had a very historic bulk order of almost 470 aircraft. Um, when you have a 50% market share, the question always is what's next for Indigo? What can we expect? Uh, so what can we expect as far as the orders are concerned? Anything as far as the XLRs are concerned? Well, for, for Indigo, I think we're, we're the very good spot. We operate today 300 aircraft. We are <coughs> no airline in India has ever reached that number yeah. of, of aircraft in operation. And we, uh, actually, we achieved that milestone just in January. Um, so that's today in operation. And we still have a little short of 500 aircraft mm. to be delivered towards the end of the decade. So that's mm. an existing order, um, and which means a steady flow of, of deliveries coming up for us. That really is important for us because that helps us to prepare the growth, yeah. prepare our network, prepare our routes, making sure that <coughs> we have the resources in place. So, so with that order, we're, I would say we're pretty good to go and ready to further. further would complete. you like to give me some numbers? Well, again, today's order is, is a little short of 500 we're having. Yeah. That's an existing order. Yeah. And at Indigo, we have never uh, let ourselves buy what others are doing and what sure. competitors are doing. And right from the start of the company, only 16 years ago, the first order was 100 aircraft back then. Yeah. And uh, throughout the, the years, more orders have be been placed. Mm. The last one uh, was, was prior to COVID. Mm. Uh, and again, that last one is serving us now well going forward. And with the existing order we have of, of almost still 500 to be delivered, we're probably somewhere in the top three to five airlines in sure. the world when it comes to outstanding fleet orders. Right. You said that you're not uh, looking at what others are doing, but even though com competition is important to how you place yourself, um, there is Akasa, a relatively new player. There's Air India trying to revamp itself. Uh, we still don't know where JET currently stands. In that kind of a scenario, where does Indigo place itself? Well, I again, Indigo's mission right from the start back in 2006 was to make sure that more and more Indian consumers are having the access to air travel. Sure. Uh, this year alone, we expect to welcome some 80 million customers. That's FY23, 80 million customers on board. Towards next year, that's probably going more in the range of, of 100 million. Yeah. Um, so with that building of our network, uh, we, we continue to, to have that as our customer proposition. Looking to the market at large and the expectations which there are for the market is that the market is expected to grow with probably twice the GDP growth for yeah. the years to come. Um, and, and with that, it should probably double by the end of the decade. So that's, that's where, where the market is, is, is heading to. And for a country of the size of India and the economy of yeah. India, it's probably a, 
a largely underserved market ready to be to be tapped and 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 at Indigo, I think we're at, at a very, very good position uh, to offer that possibility to travel to all these future customers. So taking on from what you're saying, because you feel that the potential is still not tapped as far as what we really can offer. From a consumer perspective, what can consumers expect from Indigo? Where can they fly next, but domestically as well as both international? Yeah, I think there's, there's four, three customer promise and if, let me add a fourth one so our customer promise right from the start was on-time performance yeah. um, affordable fares and hassle-free and courtesy yeah. service that's been I would say the key to success for Indigo what Indigo has been doing in 16 years is yeah. incredible from nothing to 300 sure. aircraft from nothing to 1800 flights per day yeah. welcoming 2.8 lakh customers yeah. on, on a daily basis so that very foundation was there is there and will continue to be there. Hmm. What we have added to that uh, is an unparalleled network. So hmm. today we do operate 77 destinations hmm. within the country itself. Uh, actually next Sunday, the Ramsala is gonna be added as yeah. num number 78. Uh, we're adding more destinations than I have the speed to visit all of them. <laughs> so we, we keep adding that, uh, but it's not only domestic, it's also international. Yeah. And, and clearly the share of Indian carriers on the international uh, arena hmm. was somewhat lower hmm. uh, and I think here we, we do have a good opportunity to catch up and to make sure that 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 international growth which is also ready to basically sure. to take off that Indigo is, is taking a part of that. Um, again from a consumer perspective and this is not Indigo specific but just helping uh, passengers and consumers understand you see a lot of passengers complaining about high airfare or you know wanting to pay for the basics how do you explain to a consumer or passenger what makes up the money that they're paying because ATF prices uh, they continue to fluctuate how crucial yeah. is the pricing when Indigo is thinking about what they want to offer to the consumers well it's an important factor and, and I would say the Indian uh, travel market has been very competitive yeah. also when it comes to pricing and if you compare that on an international scale, yeah. it's probably one of the most competitive yeah. markets. Uh, and uh, Actually, I got two questions in interviews like this. One question usually is, the airfares are too low, how can you ever make money? <laughs> and the other question is, the airfares are too high, what are you going to do for the consumers? And I guess in that range, we're, we're balancing. Um, so we see that there's, of course, there's fluctuations throughout yeah. the season, Christmas time, Diwali time, that's, that's the busy season, then you have yeah. some off season. Uh, that will continue to take place. I think overall for the consumers, the, the uh, fuel bill, the ATF bill, that's a very significant part of it. Mm. Then of course we invest in our fleet, we invest in, in, in digitization, mm. we invest in all the aspects. Looking overall at airfares in India, compared from an international perspective, mm. I would say fares here are very, very competitive. Okay. Um, Peter, I also want to understand what's happening as far as consumers are concerned. There have been quite a few cases of unruly uh, you know, passengers on board, which seems to be uh, increasing with time. Um, Indigo has had uh, a few as well. Why do you think the pattern is increasing? And do you think airlines possibly need to relook their policies of yeah. uh, what the first response from an airline needs to be? Well, if you take, take a view at some of the recent cases, I think they should be viewed against uh, uh, probably some different backgrounds. Mm. One of them is during the COVID pandemic, mm. planes were empty yeah. or mostly empty. Yeah. And people were sort of happy to fly, don't move, don't go mm. around, just, just sit there. With all these restrictions being gone, planes are getting fuller again. Mm. Uh, there's, I would say, almost the normal yeah. uh, hustle and bustle of airports and, and, and getting on board of planes is back. Um, that's one. And that's sort of creating a certain mm. dynamic. Two, I think some of the uh, examples which took place got a lot of attention. Mm. Again, we do welcome on a daily basis 2.8 lakh yeah. customers a day. Yeah. Um, every uh, sort of interaction uh, mm. there is uh, gets a lot of attention. Yeah. Uh, we are training our people, our colleagues to deal with the situation. We are yeah. well trained, they're well prepared for any of the, uh, of the elements. I think it's our job as management to stand by them and to support them uh, where possible. That's also what we did mm. in the cases which, which occurred. Um, and I think some of the attention which some of these cases got, it also made a bit of a paradigm shift yeah. from um, ev even making people realize mm. that, that my colleagues on board of, on board of the aircraft, they're doing their job. Mm. 
And no, I agree with the point, and it was actually very commendable that Indigo was one of those airlines that actually stood by should, uh, their yeah. staff, and and that's why I asked you: Do you think it's possibly uh, time to relook the policies of, for example, an alcohol policy on board? Do you think it's possibly a time to relook policies like these? Well, domestic, we don't have alcohol. Yeah, of course, uh, international. At all. International, we have, we have. We are not flying very hmm. long, and so our our flight range is limited to the five, six hours range mm. the Airbus uh, are, are having. I think the, the, the big element is what I said, training of our staff, making sure that, that we train them, we help them, and when, when things are getting difficult, that we stand by them and support them. And that's yeah. why, uh, thank, you, thank you for mentioning that, that's why I really felt we should stand, stand yeah. by our staff in, this, in these, these times. Again, the fact that it got so much attention, I'm sure it would make some people realize that, um, you know, <laughs> When you yeah. sit on board of the aircraft, yeah. and, and this, I made that statement earlier, please treat our crew in the way you want to be treated mm. by our crew. Yeah. And I think if that's the basis assumption of, of flying, together we, we can come a very long way. Perfect. Peter, always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank Likewise. you so much for taking our time and doing this for us. Thank you so much.